welcome to the Call to Action podcast with Nicole Magic, where conscious awakened leaders listen and action takers are rewarded. Join us for the insightful wisdom of today's special guest with an irresistible offer. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Nicole Magic with the Call to Action podcast, where professional service providers and strategists share their wisdom. It's short and sweet because we value everyone's time and energy. So let's dive right in. Today, I have Claudia Garbett with me from Rewire Your Brain for Success. And um, we're just going to geek out a little bit because we're both scientists. So Let's talk a little bit here, Claudia. In a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Of course. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. And here's me in a nutshell. So as you said, my name is Claudia Garbett, and I'm a molecular biologist turned mindset and high performance coach for ambitious and mission-driven entrepreneurs. And I teach my clients how to leverage the fundamental mechanics, mechanisms at the intersection of physiology and psychology that drive all human behavior, achievement, and well-being. And what I do is I basically teach them how they can work with their brain and body instead of against them to stay happy, healthy, and productive and achieve their goals without burning out or sacrificing their health relationships or happiness. And I'm really passionate about empowering other entrepreneurs to just, you know, ditch the constant worry and self-doubt and hustle and overwhelm so that they can become authentic and confident leaders and conscious creators of their dream lives. And I'm also the, the host of the um, entrepreneurship podcast, the Wired for Success podcast, where we talk about all things science, self-development, and entrepreneurship that help you get to that next level in your life and uh, next level of success in your life and business. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that because um, there's so much science behind your true desires, right? And that whole alignment and you and I both know this from that scientific standpoint, as well as more of that holistic or metaphysical or quantum physics aspect mm -hmm. that gets brought into that because um, it's super important for us to be able to align our brains and our bodies and where yeah. our passions are with our souls. So tell me a little bit more and tell our listeners a little bit more about the wisdom that you want to share today about how psychology and psych uh, physiology and psychology um, are the two sides to that same coin. Absolutely. I'd love to. So many people still look at the mind and the body as two separate things. Yet this couldn't be further from the truth, right? They are more like two sides of the same coin and there's this constant and intricate communication between them so one example that i would love to share today just to illustrate this point is the famous milkshake study i'm not sure if you're familiar with that but in 2011 um, clinical psychologist Elia Crum wanted to test how much the information on a label can actually affect the way that your body processes food. Now, that might seem like a bit of an odd question at first, because why would the way that you think about food change how it's processed in your body? You would think that it's just the calories and the nutrients in your food that your body reacts to, right? Yet, <laughs> what they discovered in that study was that this is actually not true. It's your, so your body's physiology does actually change depending on the information you're given. So here's the experiment for all the science nerds out there. So what the researchers did is they had one big batch of milkshake that they prepared and they divided it into just two batches with different labels. One batch was labeled as a, I think it was 140 calorie sensi shake without any sugar and without any fat. 
And the other one was just labeled as this indulgent 620 calorie treat containing lots of fat and sugar. So, but just to make this point very clear, in reality, both batches contained the same 300 calorie milkshake. So pretty <laughs> sneaky, right? Yeah. So then the scientists went ahead and just measured ghrelin levels in the participants' blood at three different points in time before uh, consuming the shake, after reading the label, and sometime after consumption. And just uh, to let people know who might not be familiar with this, ghrelin is a hormone that signals the brain that it's time to eat something. That's why it's also often called the hunger hormone. So once you eat something, your ghrelin level drops, signaling your brain that this is enough. Let's just fire up our metabolism to burn all those calories. And for a long time, it was believed that ghrelin levels change in a very simple and linear fashion with the number of calories that you consume. So if you eat a big burger and fries, you'd get this huge drop in ghrelin. But if you only ate like an apple or a salad or something like another low calorie snack, you would not get the same big drop in ghrelin. Which again, seems like a sensible assumption, right? After all, your metabolism needs to reflect the changes in your diet. But here's where, it's get, where it gets really interesting. The ghrelin levels dropped about three times more when people were consuming what they perceived as the indulgent shake compared to the people who drank the Sensi, the sensi shake. So the body's physiology reacted to the information the study participants received rather than to the actual calories they consumed. And this is crazy, right? This is just one example to show how much the mind can influence the body, but it also works the other way around. For instance, some people, myself included, are familiar with getting angry when they get hungry. So this is when changes in your body's physiology trigger your mind to feel a certain way. So I think it's just very critical to become aware of how emotions are translated into biochemistry and the other way around so that we can find a way to leverage these biological feedback systems to our advantage. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. And it's like, it kind of, in some way, is like that placebo effect, right? If you think yes. that you are, if the, you're getting something and your body's reacting a certain way based on your perception, um, that's where the placebo effects comes into play. And very interesting, that whole, all of that, because as you were telling that story, I just kept thinking, Wow, how a lot of people will use food as whether it's comfort food or indulgent food, or I'm trying to make myself feel better, right? And just all these things and how we think of food, or I'm just super on the run all the time. I don't have time to eat anything. So I just pick up whatever garbage is on the way, right? And that's yeah. the perception, right? So if we're thinking that you're not n actually nourishing the body, mm -hmm. even if you have to pick up that fast food along the way, maybe start thinking a little bit differently about that food, even if it's fast food along the way. <laughs> exactly. And it also makes me wonder about, oh, when you take prescription drugs or something and you just read all the, like all the things that can go wrong, like, Ooh, yeah don't, maybe don't read the side effects so what I do for instance I I will give if I have to take something and I don't usually take a lot of these things but if I have to I give it to my husband like the 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 leaflet with all the side effects and I, I tell him you read it you tell me if there's anything that I need to worry about because I can't read that <laughs> Wow, it, that's a huge awareness, right? And maybe our listeners out there really think about how you think about your food or whatever that you're putting into your body and how can you change that even slightly? Because even slight shifts in the mindset, and I talk about this with money, right? Those slight shifts create big ripples in your life. 
So if you're looking at your body and you're, you're thinking, you know, you don't look the way that you want to look, start looking at the food that you're eating or the drinks that you're drinking and change how you're perceiving what you're doing, right? And it'll shift on its own. Yeah, mm. absolutely. <laughs> That's a lot of great information, Claudia. So um, I'm going to ask you, what obstacle became your greatest opportunity? So many things. I, I have a feeling that almost all of our greatest opportunities come from some sort of obstacle that we encounter along the way. So one of the things that just comes to mind for me was starting my own podcast because before I started it, I hated public speaking. And I mean, I hated it. It would make me feel so nervous. I would just sweat like crazy and feel like passing out. That's how much it stressed me out. And I thought that people would find my accent annoying. I would not find the right words. I thought I might just make a fool of myself. And there were so many reasons or excuses to not to do it. But I also genuinely love talking to people from all around the world. And I love building real relationships. In fact, that's one of my favorite things to do. So I had all the fears and all the excuses on one side and the desire to communicate with amazing people on the other side. And eventually I decided to just give it a go. And I'm so glad I did because I'm I've been podcasting for two years now. My show is currently ranked in the top 2.5%. So yay. yay. And I have started to teach other people how to run their own successful shows. So that's pretty crazy. That's awesome. And such a big difference, right? Because I too, I had all of those excuses of why I should just keep my mouth shut and not say anything. I these things that we tell ourselves are based on our belief systems, right? Or yeah. in the programs that we've had growing up. And that happened to me where I hated my voice. Yes. And then when I, I, I actually had to speak when I was a chemist because I had to present. And mm -hmm. so I got used to that, but that was because I had to for my job. But when I started doing all the fun things and got asked to be on radio, TV, and all that stuff, people started messaging me saying, I could listen to you all day, Nicole. You That's have such a soothing voice. Well. Right? Yeah. And kind of like with you saying, people aren't going to like my accent. Quite the opposite, Claudia. It's like, oh, people love hearing accents and, and listening to your beautiful voice and it's, it's so interesting that when we start shifting that, when I started hearing about, oh, I, I love your voice, I start asking myself, well, how come I don't? Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I started to shift that. I want to love my voice. It's, there's got to be something to it if all these people are telling me, and then I don't like it. So I need to figure out how to like my voice. Mm -hmm. And then that just spurred into so many opportunities. So in all of that, what did you find? Because I found that being mindful, having an awareness and, and really focusing on the things that I wanted versus mm -hmm. the things that were telling me yes. that I shouldn't or couldn't or won't or can't make it. What mindfulness practices do you utilize or have you utilized that have helped propel you um, that maybe you want to share with the audience so that they can maybe find their way too? Yes. So, so many different things. <laughs> but one of the things that you mentioned is super, super important to just focus on what you want to achieve and what can go right versus focusing on what can go wrong. It's like driving, you know, those, the, I think there are studies out there so from um, about car accidents, like people driving on those very, very straight roads. And there's just 
one tree at the side of the road and people regularly crash into that tree because they focus on the one thing, the one obstacle, the one thing that's in the way. And they focus so much that this is exactly where they end up. They don't focus on the road. They focus on the tree. So I tried to not do that mistake and focus more on all the things that can go right and that I want to create. So that was certainly one thing. But the other thing that I think is super, super important um, because we talk about mind and body and psychology and physiology. So that was maybe the psychology side of it. But from the physiology side of it, I would say that training your nervous system to get out of that constant fight or flight, that is so powerful Because when we, as you said, when we grow up and we learn that, for instance, it's not safe for me to speak up. It's not safe for me to be seen, to be heard and to just show up as my true authentic self. And we get into this constant fight or flight mode where we are just constantly stressing out. That's when things go really, really wrong. I mean, you can still achieve a lot of the things you want to achieve, but it's all with a lot of force. It's force versus power. That's what I would say. So if we can learn to shift that, that's major. Yeah, that is huge because focusing on what you want versus what you don't want. So many people don't even know what they want. And then shifting your body physiologically into you know, keeping calm instead of your emotions getting riled up and then following through on an emotional rise. That is huge. Do you have any um, tips on how to do that, how to tap into that? Yes, absolutely. So one thing that I found really, really helpful was a breath work. It's something I started to do a few years ago, but there are other things like Uh, regular cold exposure, for instance. So there are lots of different uh, tools and techniques that you can use and layer one on top of each other to become more stress tolerant. And that over time will really allow you to stay calm and focused under pressure and just to face whatever life throws at you, because in the end, you can only control yourself right you cannot control the outside world you cannot control other people so for me it was really about learning to master myself so that I can be more flexible (laughs) yeah and that's one thing that I know from my own experience anyway is when you become aware of your own self who you are, how you react, when you just really develop that self-awareness, you start to really understand everyone else around you too. Yes. (laughs) So it's not always a projection of what's going on with someone else. You understand people at a very deep level. Yeah, I think there's a famous quote that goes something along the lines of you can only meet somebody else as deeply as you've met yourself. And I think that's very true. (laughs) I think that is very true. That's a great quote. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, So this brings us to this point of what amazing offer does Claudia have for us today? (laughs) (laughs) So many. No, just kidding. So what I'd love to share with the listeners today is um, a tool, well, actually a course I created that helps them uh, win back one to two hours of precious time each day. So maybe I should start with the reason why I created it. So what really breaks my heart is that so many entrepreneurs just, they start their businesses because they want to provide for their families and they want the freedom to work on their own terms so that they can be there for their kids and family. Yet oftentimes they end up working crazy hours. They hardly see their friends and family. They jeopardize their health. They feel constantly stressed and overwhelmed. And they feel like the only way out of that misery is to work more. And 
this is well this is not true right when you look at the things that we do on a daily basis we have to really ask ourselves what percentage of the things that we do actually moves the needle for us and what is just busy work that makes us feel like we are productive even though we are not and how much time and energy do we waste on doubting ourselves, on second guessing our every move or just trying to get every detail perfect? And the truth is we often mistake busy for productive and the answer to the productivity problem might actually be to do less but with more intention so to help people figure out what to keep and what to put on their not to do list i have created this five day course that's called um, five days to get in your life back and yeah as i said it teaches ambitious entrepreneurs how to win back one to two hours of time each day so they can do all the things that they love to do and for the listeners of this podcast, I've created a special discount code that lets you purchase the code for 50% off. <laughs> Excellent. So we will have that link in the description. So stay tuned for that. We'll put that in the description and the coupon code that you can get all that. Um, taking back one to two hours every single day adds up to huge massive shifts. So this is something that I know that my followers are always looking to do is there's never enough time. There's never enough time. Right. Mm. And it's, there's something that you said in there that has been my mantra forever. Now, it seems, um, even back when I was in chemistry, I getting presentations done, I'd get stuck in these little spaces. And it's like, I had to remind myself, no one cares what color this line in the graph is. <laughs> Only you do for whatever reason. And it's procrastination effort, right? Uh -huh. So I, my mantra throughout the years that I still teach my clients is no one good is good enough to mm -hmm. be able to move on, right? And, and following and focusing on what is the end point of of what you're achieving versus the each and every little tiny tasks that keep you stuck in that perpetual whirlpool of not getting there, right? So that's part of the secret, I'm sure, is really focusing on what you're trying to achieve versus all these little tasks that you've laid out and are focused on those tasks instead, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So. We're going to have that link. Um, Claudia, can you tell us what your main website is so that our listeners can go and take a look at you and learn a little bit more? Sure. My website is www.wiredforsuccess.solutions. Sweet. Check her out. Follow her. And I'm going to put a bunch of stuff in the description below. So click on those links, follow her and go and also check out the podcast that she has too. So this is all for today. Thank you everyone for joining us. And we would love to hear what your favorite takeaway is in the comments. So thank you for listening, everyone. I'm Nicole Magic and have a spectacular day. Thank you, Claudia, for joining us. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Goodbye, everyone, and thank you for listening. I hope you found today's episode insightful and invaluable to elevating your own business. 